electrons, protons, and neutrons. Are you familiar with these subatomic particles? Scientists have proven, however, that atom is composed of even small particles. From the experiment in the latter part of 19th century to the early part of 20th century, scientists even collected evidence that atoms are composed of three tiny particles called proton, electron, and neutron. These components are commonly referred to subatomic particles. Hello, grade 8 students, and to all the students out there, hello, kumusta kayo? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Kim May. Siyempre, ang kasama mo sa iyong science journey. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 8. our fourth week of our quarter three in science eight and for today's vlog module four na tayo we're going to discuss about atoms inside out and the common questions that you have to learn for this lesson is number one what makes an atom number two how do these components differ from each other Number three, how are these components arranged inside the atom? And number four, how is atom differ from an ion? Okay, so in your earlier grade level, so you studied about a magnet. So ano ba ang meron sa magnet? So yung magnet, di ba meron silang two end pole? Okay, we have the south pole and the north pole. Now, Okay, ano ba ang nangyayari kapag yung dalawang magnet parehas na north ay pinagdikit ninyo? So, di ba ang tendency niyan is they move apart. So, hindi sila nagdudugtong. So, pag north to north at pinagdugtong mo, they move apart. How about if you put both south ends of the two magnets? Okay, yung kabilang part naman. When you put them together, south to south, same observation. So, they will move apart. But, when you place north and south ends of the two magnets next to each other, they attract. Ano po? Okay. So, what does it indicate? This observation only indicates that like ends repel and like ends attract. Electric charges or simply charges either positive or negative charge behave similarly. That is, like charges repel or push away each other and unlike charges attract or pull towards each other. Keep that in mind because on our next activity, we're going to apply this concept in our activity about charge to experience. Okay, in this activity that we're going to perform, so our objectives is to observe that objects may attract or repel. Number two objective is to infer that objects may carry a positive or a negative charge. And of course, for objective number three, so let us deduce that neutral objects contain positive and negative charges. So in this activity, the materials that we need to have or we need to use are the meter stick. So kung walang meter stick, any stick na lang na that corresponds to one meter. Okay, and we also have balloons, probably two balloons. And then we will have a string, chairs, or any stand for the stick, and then glass. Okay, yung glass kahit yung glass lang sa picture frame. Okay, and then we also have the cloth. Hi! So, kung mapapansin nyo nga pala sa ating video na ipipresent ko, dun sa experiment natin about charge at experience, I was not able to use balloons or yung balloon talaga sa kadahilan na na yung nabili kong balloon ay damaged na. So, hindi siya nagkaigay. Kung mapapansin nyo itong video na to, 
So, pumutok siya. So, para magkaroon tayo ng alternate na balloon na magagamit tayo sa experiment, gumamit na ako ng plastic. So, ito yung makikita nyo sa ating gagawin na experiment. So, ito yung in-inflate natin na balloon. Ito yung irarab natin sa ating hair. Okay? So, makikita nyo naman sa video kung ano yung nangyari ba when these two balloons are being rubbed with our hair and then ano nangyari sa kanila once na nagkadikit sila, nag-push away ba or nag-pull away. Ayan. And then, of course, ayun na nga. So, panoorin nyo yung ating video para mas maintindihan ko ano yung experiment. And, uh, somehow, dahil nga medyo improvised yung ginawa nating balloon, may some error siguro or hindi nyo masyado nakita kung paano nag-pull or kung paano nag-push away itong dalawang balloon. So, meron akong ilalagay ditong link Okay, or tingnan nyo din sa description box yung link ng another vi separate video na makikita nyo rin kung ano ba ang nangyayari talaga kapag balloon na mismo yung ginamit natin. So, somehow, yun din naman yung nangyayari dito. Kaya lang medyo minimal lang yung makikita nyo kung paano talaga siya nag-repel yung dalawang balloon. Okay, so panoorin nyo yung video na to and then panoorin nyo rin yung video na isasend ko yung, il ilalagay ko dito yung link. Okay, ito rin anado. Nasa YouTube din siya. Okay, let's watch! Procedure number one, inflate the two balloons. Tie each using a length of string. Place the meter-long stick across two chairs and suspend the two balloons so that they hang freely about two inches apart. Next, with each hand holding one balloon, rub the balloon simultaneously against your hair several times. Then, let go of the balloons and observe. Question number one, what happened with the balloons? Number two, did the balloons acquire the same charges or different charges? What made you think so? Okay, sige. I-discuss natin yung ginawa nating activity. From the activity that we have performed, okay, we experience that objects, even though they seem to be neutral, they still carry charges. Well, in fact, we even able to charge them by, by simply rubbing it with another object. Kagaya na lang kung paano natin nirub itong balloon with our hair. You can infer that after you have rubbed the balloons, they acquired a charge since they pushed away each other. You can even say that balloons acquired the same charge. They have ended. The balloon or synthetic rubber, the material the balloon is made of, acquire negative charges when rubbed. Procedure number three. Rub the piece of glass with a silk cloth. Bring the piece of glass between the two balloons. Observe. Walay. Ano na yari sa dalawang balloon? Lumalapit sila doon sa glass. They move towards the glass. Tanggal ng natin. So di ba magkat? Oh, magkalayo. Insert ulit natin sa gitna. Okay. Oh, look at the two balloons. They move toward the glass. How are you going to describe the charges acquired by the glass and the balloons? Are they the same or not? Siyempre, they are different. And if they are different charges, if there are different charges, meaning to say, they will attract. The reason why, if we rub this, and we put this in between the two balloons, okay, they attract. Ayan, pupunta sila. Isn't it amazing? How about the rub glass? What charges do you think the glass carried after it was rubbed with the cloth? Yes, tama kayo! Yung glass natin is positively charged since the negatively charged balloons were attracted towards the rubbed glass. 
Okay, from here, pwede nating sabihin that objects are electrically neutral or simply neutral, but they still carry electrical charges. Pero saan nga ba galing itong mga charges na to? Noong nakaraang mga vlog natin, napag-aralan natin na ang matter is made up of tiny particles called atom. At lahat ng mga object na nakikita natin, kahit yung mga bagay na ginamit natin dito sa activity number one natin, which is yung balloon at mga glass, they are made up of atom. And these atoms are electrical in nature. Atoms contains particles with positive and negative charge. Proton is a positive charge and electron is a negative charge. And remember that atoms in their most stable state are neutral with an equal number of protons and electrons. And another particle of an atom is what we call neutron. Okay, from the word neutron, so para siyang neutral, meaning to say, hindi siya nagkakarry ng positive or negative charge. Okay, now, let us discuss some properties of the three main subatomic particles of matter, which are the proton, electron, and neutron. So, may papakita ko sa inyong table. So, dito natin makikita ngayon yung kanilang properties. So, we have here the table that shows the subatomic particle. We have also the symbol, the charge, the mass, and grams, and of course, Sa ang location ba ng atom natin, mapatagpo, matatagpuan itong main subatomic particles of an atom. Okay, so let's start with the electron. So, ang symbol natin ng electron is E negative for the reason that electron is negative charge. So, proton, this, okay, remember na yung electron, so small letter E lang yan, okay? And then yung proton naman, so, the symbol for proton is P positive. So, it means proton and then alam naman natin na ang charge ng proton is positive. And we also have the neutron which is N and then we have zero here. Okay? Now, what is the charge of this subatomic particle? So, obviously, ang charge ng electron is negative. And ang charge naman ng ating proton, that is positive. And the charge of our neutron is zero. It means it, it does not carry any charge. Okay? Now, how about for the mass and grams of the subatomic particles? Okay, for electron, we have 9.109 times 10 to the negative 28. Okay? Grams. Okay, so ang unit niyan is grams. So, ang electron is 9.109 times 10 to the negative 28 grams. And for the proton, we have 1.672 times 10 to negative 24 grams. And for neutron, neutron, we have 1.675 times 10 to negative 24. Okay, now, saan naman natin makikita ang location nitong tatlo? Okay, when it comes to location, so the electron could be found outside. Okay, outside the nucleus. However, itong proton and neutron, matatagpuan naman natin siya sa loob ng nucleus. Okay, parehas. So, ang electron lang yung naandun sa labas ng nucleus. Okay, explain lang natin ng mabilis yung tungkol dun sa location ng mga subatomic particle. Okay, di ba nung nakaraang vlog natin, diniscuss natin yung tungkol sa matter, na ang matter, it is made up of atoms. Okay, yung tiny particles. Now, okay, para lalong mas malinaw sa inyo, di ba nabanggit natin yung sa nakaraan nating vlog, na yung atom, pwede natin siyang i-compare sa isang malaking gymnasium. At yung isang malaking gymnasium na yun, meron doon, for example, sa gitna nun, ay merong maliit na bola ng, uh, maliit na bola na lang, kahit anong bola. Okay, so, for example, ito yung malaking gymnasium. Okay? And then, sa loob niyan, meron pang maliit. 
Okay, yung maliit na yun, ito yung nucleus na tinatawag natin. So, sa loob ng nucleus, nandiyan yung positive at saka yung neutron. So, kaya ang sabi natin kanina, yung location ng proton and neutron, nasa loob yan ng nucleus. Nasaan ngayon yung electron? Yung electron naman, yan yung naandun sa labas. May mga orbitals dyan. And naandyan yung ating mga electron. Okay? So, itong electron na negative charge. If we're going to study the mass of these three subatomic particles, it's very obvious that electron are very much lighter than proton and neutron. Ang electron, napakagaan lang na ito kumpara sa proton and neutron in the sense that that the mass of the electron does not significantly contribute to the mass of the entire atom. Kumbaga, yung mass ng electron is negligible. Obvious naman, di ba? Electron, 9.109 times 10 to the negative 28 grams and the proton and neutron, halos magkadikit lang sila, 1.672 times 10 to the negative 24 and the neutron is 1.675 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. Collectively, protons and neutrons are called nucleons. The nucleons, they are tightly packed together to form nucleus, which is the center part of the atom. Kaya naman, class, most of the mass of the atom is contained in its nucleus. Okay, let us talk about the scientists who discovered these subatomic particles. Okay, alam niyo ba kung sinong nakadiscover ng proton, ng electron, at ng neutron? Okay, pag-usapan natin yan. Electron, which is the negative charge particle, was discovered by J.J. Thomson. Yan, ito si J.J. Thomson. However, the positive charge which is the proton, was discovered by Eugene Goldstein. And the neutron was discovered by James Chadwick. Ito naman si James Chadwick. When the idea of the atom was first proposed by the Asian Greeks, they thought it was a particle with no parts. However, towards the 90th century, J.J. Thompson was able to discover that atoms have negatively charged particles which he called electrons. It led him to propose a new model for the atom which he called the plum padding model. Thomson proposed that the negatively charged electrons were embedded in a kind of cloud or soup of positive charge as shown in this figure. Since Plums and poddings are not commonly known in the Philippines. It may work better for you that we use the other name for the model, the Raisin Bread Model. Earlier in 1886, Eugene Goldstein, a German scientist, did some experiments with gas discharge tube with perforated cathodes. He found out while the cathode rays were formed and speed toward the plate, some rays were formed and shot through the holes in the cathode in the opposite direction. The rays were found to be made up of positive particles and were named proton. In science, models based on observations from experiment are tested further, sometimes by other scientists to determine their validity. A group of scientists composed of Ernest Rutherford, Johannes Hans Wilhelm Geiger and Ernest Marsden tested Thomson's model by bombarding a very thin sheet of gold foil which positively charged alpha particles. Their experiment is referred to as alpha particle scattering experiment. While the mass of the atom was accounted for the discovery of the third subatomic particle, the neutron, by James Chadwick in 1932, and this particle has no charge. This is the end of our lesson vlog in Science 8. I hope you learned something from this vlog. 
So, for our next lesson vlog, part 2 of today's topic about atoms pa rin. So, sa ating next na lesson vlog, i-discuss naman natin ang, ang kung paano ba ilolocate ang atomic number in a periodic table and also to identify the subatomic particles associated with mass number and to determine the number of neutrons from the mass number. So, I hope na kasama ko pa rin kayo until our next lesson vlog in Science 8 for Quarter 3. So, thank you so much for listening and for joining us here for another vlog. This is me again, Teacher Tin May, kasama mo sa iyong science journey. Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na ito, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 8. Thank you and see you on my next vlog. Bye! I wait! Kung ikaw nga pala ay grade 8 student at gusto mo rin matuto sa English 8, I highly recommend the YouTube channel of Ma'am Kea. Ito yung kanyang YouTube channel, Christian May Zabala. So, pwede yung puntahan yung mga lesson vlog ni Ma'am para maunawaan nyo rin yung mga lesson sa English 8. So, huwag kalimutan mag-subscribe kay Ma'am Kea. So, yun lang. See you on my next vlog. Thank you and have a good day. Nag-subscribe ka na ba? Subscribe ka muna!